I've been keeping track of this uh, Young Thug case, and it's, it's fascinating. I mean, if, in case you don't know, Young Thug is a rapper. He's not just like a Fox News placeholder. Like that's, <laughs> No, he's a, he's a rapper, he's a young man that does the raps, and he's on trial right now in, in Fulton County, Georgia, in connection with about 50 shootings in, in Georgia and one murder, which means if nothing else, he is guilty of missing a lot. How do you have 49 unsuccessful shoot? He's not even racking up bystanders, by the way. Are you just shooting in the air? At 30 failed shootings, drop the gun, pick up a knife. It is much harder to miss. It's just, it's weird. I wonder what it's like in that car. I wonder what, what the pep talk is like. Y'all, listen. Focus up. When we see him, do not ask if that's him. It's making everybody second guess. You making him speed up, you making him not shoot. Just be quiet. It's, it, it, it. Let's see if we can do this. And they missed 30 more times. I know that's not how it goes, but it's fun to imagine. It's, it's also crazy because this man's name is Young Thug. The last place you want to be named Young Thug is court. That's... That's absolutely insane. For a system that loves locking up young black men to show up named Young Thug, you might as well be called Little I Did It. That's for Young Thug. All right. Just blew my mind. But the person that's most fascinating to me is his lawyer. His lawyer is, uh, is, is white. And he's like white, white. You know what I mean? He's like, you know that white where it's like somebody bleached a soul or something. Like, you, you hit different levels of white we haven't seen before. He's the whitest person I've ever seen on camera. And his entire defense is fascinating because his defense of Young Thug is just say what Young Thug is accused of doing in his white, white voice, which does make it sound implausible. <laughs> Because then he's like, Your Honor, <laughs> Your Honor, Your Honor, my, my client has never busted a zip down. It's like, you know what? It, now that you say it, it does sound ridiculous. Like, now that I hear it like that, it doesn't even sound like anybody does that. That's true. You should free this young man. That's, I don't think I've ever heard of any. Your Honor, this young man would never let the blicker spray. It's like, I don't even think that's real. You're right. No. And it's also the word thug. Word thug is one of the slurriest words we have that's not a slur. Like, it's not, it's not actually a slur, but it's loaded. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like if you copped a slur back. <laughs> no. And he, and he's named Young Thug. He's in court. Webster defines thug as a, as a brutal or violent criminal, right? Synonymous with hooligan or troublemaker. His lawyer had a different definition. His lawyer stood in front of the judge and said, Your Honor, Your Honor, thug, thug, thug. Thug simply means truly humble under God. <laughs> honestly, 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 Bars, all right? Like, no matter what happens with the case, you need to get this man in the booth, okay? See what else he's cooking up. Fascinating. I don't, I, I can't see that well. Like, I don't, I don't have the best eyes. And so I had to go to optometrist and, and we just gotta, we gotta mix up the test a little bit. This test, this is archaic stuff we doing right now is not okay. Like, I get you have to just, in life you have to read, so I get having the reading be part of the test and stuff, but then when you get to the smaller letters, they're trying to trick you anyway. They're like, is it a three or an E? It's like, don't play with me right now. This is my future we're talking about. You know, I just wish that the test was more dynamic. Like, yes, I'll read the stuff on the wall, but also you're an eye doctor, come up with some new ideas, just look at me. In, the, in your office and go, if I don't flinch, <laughs> clearly
clearly I can't see, you know what I mean? Just buck up at me real quick. If I don't move, I clearly need glasses. <laughs> but she's an eye doctor, my, my eye doctor, she's an eye doctor, so you would think that being an eye doctor, you've seen people with worse eyes than me. I'm not legally blind or anything. But then I got done with the test and she was trying to break the fact that I needed glasses to me like it was bad news or something. She was like, I, I, first of all, what is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's for Lifetime movies. They're like, I, like that. <laughs> so weird. So she's like, I, I, I'm surprised you can see me. I was like, that's, that's probably the most unprofessional diagnosis I've ever gotten. <laughs> and so I need, I need glasses. I can't do contacts. I can't do it. I cannot do I, I cannot touch my own eye. Like, I will pass out if I have to touch my I'm not a strong man. I will throw up if I have to touch my own eye. And my friends with contacts are like, it's not that bad. You get used to it. It's like, if you get used to it, then why do all my friends that wear contacts can't seem to put them in with, without their mouth open? Everybody I know that wear contacts, every time be going, ah, 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 you want to get something to eat or what? Like that's normal. Everybody. Nobody has a sexy contact technique. I've never seen someone be like, oh, and now I see it. <laughs> it's always like, oh, oh, oh. God, I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm a weak of spirit. I cannot do it. So I need glasses. And then I go to the optometrist, and I don't know anything. So then I'm about to get my glasses from the optometrist. I didn't know that that was a huge mark. I didn't know that that was like the bottle service of glasses. <laughs> it's like unnecessarily expensive to get them from the optometrist. So then I'm at the optometrist, and then she sends me out of her office to pick out some glasses. Now they got frames on frames on frames and cases and everything. They got the roller thing with the frames and everything. And so I'm looking at that. Now, I don't know much about fascia, and I don't know anything about glasses. So I need help. My doctor busy doctoring, all right? And then the receptionist is typing, she's not helpful. So then they send this woman over to me. I don't know what she does. I think she's like an eye nurse or whatever, but she like was not busy at all. And then she comes over to help me pick out glasses. And instead of just helping me pick out glasses, instead of telling me what glasses look good on me and don't look good on me, she just started telling me what my head looked like. And that is not helpful at all. You just give me something to think about when I go home. This is, this is terrible. So then she's like, you got kind of a Franklin, you got kind of a turtle thing going on. So. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep you away from the big frames. You're gonna look like Frank. And I was like, I haven't tried a pair on yet. So now I'm more self-conscious than I was stepping in. And then this is what really bothered me. So then I was sitting, waiting to see the doctor. There was a woman, middle-aged about, sitting next to me. So she clearly a patient, right? So then she starts chiming in. She starts telling me what looks good and don't look good. And I'm like, can you see though? Because you clearly waiting to see the doctor as well. Don't act like I'm... And instead of telling me what looked good or did not look good, they just told me every pair of glasses what black nerd from TVI looked like. Like, it was the most offensive. She's like, that's a little too hurtful for you right now. It's like, well, you look like Norbit. It's like, nobody was talking to you, man. You can't see. I don't know, this is not helpful at all. And I don't think we give enough credit to people with bad eyes. You know? It's people like me that make the world interesting. It is. You look at any ancient civilization, it's people like me are the reason we have mythology. Yo, 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 I, I was in the woods and I saw, I saw a half man, half horse. Things called centaurs. Like, nah, it's not what you saw at all. That did not happen, I guarantee you. You saw a nigga on a horse, and your brain could not compute. You just said, half man, half horse, my eyes are never wrong. But to his credit, we did write it down and repeat it for hundreds of years. Yo, yo, you'll never believe it. I saw a mermaid. It's a beautiful woman, half woman, half fish, and she did the light thing, and then she went down. She's gone now, but I swear I just saw her. No, you didn't. A bitch was drowning. <laughs> and you didn't help. 
That's what happened. <laughs> apparently that is apparently how like the origin of the mermaid came about. It's like someone in the distance on a boat saw a sea cow really far away and thought it was like a, a woman, but also a fish. Which means even back then, with his bad eyes, he was like, all right, she thick, I like that. All right, come swim to daddy. I can tell I'm getting older because I finally care about ingredients. <laughs> You're like, well, you young, you be eating Taco Bell off the floor and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm like, mm, how much dairy is in there? Because I have places to be tonight. <laughs> I'm not half as bad as my uncle. Though. My uncle found out, he's not even allergic. He just has a slight intolerance for xanthan gum. Right? If you don't know what xanthan gum is, that's fine. It's like a bonding agent. It's in a lot of candies and stuff. The point is, he will go to a restaurant with me and then ask the server if every item has xanthan gum in it, which is absolutely insane to watch. He'll be like, no, no, no. No, there ain't no xanthan gum in that broccoli, is it? Like, there is one ingredient in the broccoli, sir. And it's broccoli, you don't need to worry. There's no xanthan gum in this corn. Why would there be xanthan gum in just a side of corn? Just skip the sides. No, this chicken fried chicken steak, it ain't got no xanthan gum in it. And he's always giving way too much information to the server. He's like, because you see, you know, like that corn, even that corn will give in my guts, so don't leave. He's like, you are ruining her day. Just please order something. Sure, ain't no sense going to the chicken fried chicken. I was like, just order it or don't, please, 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 please. Like you know, like you know the veins you get when you're trying to yell at a family member without yelling. You know what I'm talking about? Where you're like, but like you're trying to stress, like shut up, shut. Up. You know? And so he ordered the chicken fried chicken steak, and it turns out there was xanthan gum in the chicken fried, which nobody could have known. That's not fair at all. I was rushing him. That's my bad. He was in the bathroom cursing me out. <laughs> it's like, you know I got them bad guts, boy. <laughs> this 70 year old woman I saw in the news in, in Uganda that gave birth to twins. Seven years old, gave birth to twins. One of the oldest people on record to give birth to twins. And everyone that I worked with had their opinions about it and everything. But I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I know I'll never have to like have a kid myself, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but it does seem like 70 is the perfect age to have twins. Y'all on the same sleep schedule. Y'all eat all the same foods. You both gotta be careful about falling. It's just... Y'all vibing out. When I Mira, 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 mira,